slow cooker is going to do all the work. I'm using a four pound piece of chuck roast. That's a pretty big chuck roast. And I'll season the other side with salt and pepper. And then you won't believe how easy the rest of this recipe is. I've got a big jar of pepperoncinis and I'm going to put the whole thing, juice and all, right into the slow cooker. Now I'll add two cups of beef broth for the liquid. Last thing is some fresh rosemary. I'm going to put on the lid, turn it on low, and I'll cook it for eight hours. See you on the other side. Look at how tender and fall apart that roast is. Oh my goodness. All right, now just hang tight while I shred, assemble some sandwiches, and broil them. First, I'll shred the beef. How delicious does that look? Then put it back in the slow cooker and start assembling the sandwiches. First, beef. It goes onto a buttered and broiled roll. Then some of the cooking liquid, pepperoncini, some onions sauteed in olive oil and seasoned, and two slices of provolone. I'll put all four on a sheet pan and broil them for a minute for the cheese to melt. These sandwiches look so good. I'm gonna serve the sandwiches with potato chips and little dishes of extra sauce. So that's dinner for now. And then I have a whole pan of more drip beef. That's gonna be dinner for later. Life is good. Okay, I just browned a whole bunch of beef. I salted and peppered it, sprinkled it with flour before I fried. I'll start with a bed of big chunks of onion. I've also got big chunks of carrots. Love carrots in stew. Some mushrooms, these are just brown mushrooms. You can use white, a mix of wild mushrooms, anything you want. With stew, there aren't many rules at all. I've got some fresh herbs, rosemary and parsley, and I'm just gonna throw them in whole. This is gonna cook for so long that all the flavors will definitely have a chance to release. I have some red potatoes and I scrubbed them really well, cut them into chunks. This is where the beef goes in. For the meat, I used rump roast. Rump roast is one of those meats I never can quite tell what to do with, but really it's great. If you cook it long enough, it turns out yummy and tender. But I am not content just to use beef in my beef stew. I'm gonna cut some fried bacon into chunks, sprinkle that on. Now every stew needs a really good cooking liquid, and what better way to whip up one than to pour in some beer. I've just got a bottle of beer. I'll pour about half of it in. I know just what to do with the rest. <laughs> That'll come later. And then I always add a little bit of tomato paste to any stew recipe I use. Gonna add most of the can, some garlic. Ooh, garlic and beer, how good does that look? And a dash of Worcestershire sauce. And then I'll whisk this together. This gets poured all over the top. Now, because of the tomato paste, that's pretty thick, so I have some beef broth, and I'll pour in just enough. One last thing to add, I just can't help myself, a whole jalapeno, I just sliced it in half, didn't even seed it. That is gonna be one yummy stew. I'll put the lid on, set it on low for six hours, and that is gonna be dinner for the Drummond House. Take a look at how it's gonna play out. First, I'll make buttery parsley lemon noodles to go on the side. I'll melt butter with olive oil and throw in garlic, parsley, and lemon zest. Mix it together, then add the fettuccine and toss it around. Look at how it all coats the pasta, yum. Then the juice of a lemon, a sprinkling of salt and pepper, a quick toss, and it's ready. So everybody gets a big heap of noodles on their plate, then the stew, beef, vegetables, and gravy, simply delicious. A little parsley, and that's the whole scrumptious package. Dinner for tomorrow night is gonna be slow cooker teriyaki ribs with a super simple slaw. I'm getting the ribs ready to put into the slow cooker now. These are incredibly flavorful ribs. 
I just chopped up some fresh ginger and I have a whole bunch of fresh garlic. I'm gonna season the ribs. These are baby back ribs, which is such a cheap cut of meat. And you can often find them in big family packs. I'm gonna put all this garlic in. I don't even wanna tell you how much garlic I chopped. <laughs> But the great thing about a slow cooker is everything cooks low and slow, and so you really don't have to get it chopped too fine. It's gonna cook and disappear in the eight hours that the ribs cook. I'm gonna put the lid on the slow cooker, and it goes on low, and the ribs are gonna cook for eight hours. I'm gonna serve the ribs with a really simple slaw. So I'm gonna go ahead and make it now because I think slaw gets better as it sits for several hours. I'm gonna start with about a quarter cup of mayonnaise and a quarter cup of rice vinegar. It's just approximate. I like to give it a little bit of a sweet sour flavor, so the sweet comes from honey. And I'll stir it up until it's all nice and smooth. Sprinkle in some salt and pepper. Now this is a really thin dressing, but that's good because I don't want the slaw to be gloopy. Now I am using a bag of prepared slaw mix. Sometimes you can get these on sale if they're just about to expire. I'm gonna add some thinly sliced red onion. The other reason I like to use bagged slaw sometimes is that you don't have to buy a head of lettuce and carrots and the different things that you like to put in slaw. It's nice to just have one bag, it's all prepared for you, it's ready to go. I also added a bunch of cilantro leaves and all I need to do is just toss them. The slaw is now ready. The ribs are cooking away. So let me tell you how I'm gonna turn all of this into dinner. First, the ribs. When they're all cooked, I'll put them on a baking sheet, strain the cooking juices through a strainer right into a pot, add half a cup of honey, half a cup of low sodium soy sauce, the same amount of rice vinegar, and bring it to a boil. Then I'll add a slurry made from two tablespoons cornstarch and two tablespoons water. This will thicken the sauce. The next step is to cut up the ribs, put them into a nine by 13 inch dish, pour over the sauce, and then when they're cool, I'll cover them with foil and put them in the fridge. Tomorrow at dinner time, I'll just heat them up in a 350 degree oven for 35 minutes. Then take them out, Oh, how good do these look. And serve them with the quick slaw on the side. I'm making a slow cooker lasagna that will knock their socks off. I've been sauteing some diced onion in a big old skillet. I'm gonna need this big old skillet because this has a lot of ingredients. I'm gonna start with the two meats. I've got some ground beef and some Italian sausage. Now all I need to do is just crumble the meat, let it brown completely, and then I'll move on with the recipe. Okay, I got the meat all browned. Now I'll move forward with the rest of the ingredients for the meat sauce. I've got a big old can of diced tomatoes and I'm adding the juice. The lasagna is gonna need plenty of moisture when it's in the slow cooker, so I don't drain any of this. Another small can of diced tomatoes. And then I love that rich tomato flavor, so I'm gonna add a can of tomato paste. I've got the tomatoes stirred into the meat, so I've got some seasoning to add, starting with garlic, of course. You can't make lasagna without fresh garlic. Some salt and pepper. And this has a nice mix of fresh and dried spices. I'm gonna start with some dried oregano and then I'll chop up some basil and parsley and add that in. Okie doke. The fresh herbs are all chopped up. So I'm gonna leave some aside for the cheese mixture for the lasagna. And I'll add some in here. You can't beat fresh parsley and basil. Turn the heat off and that's the meat sauce. The second step for the slow cooker lasagna is making the cheese mixture and this cheese mixture is mighty, mighty cheesy. It's got three cheeses to be exact. I've been grating up some fresh Romano cheese. Ooh, nice and sharp, I love this stuff. And I'll add about the same amount of grated Parmesan cheese. 
Now with my regular lasagna, I actually use cottage cheese, believe it or not. But I'm gonna use ricotta cheese and it's whole milk ricotta. I'm gonna add most of this container. I need three cups. And then I have a couple of eggs, which helps kind of bring everything together in the slow cooker. And the rest of these beautiful, beautiful herbs. Then all I need to add is salt and pepper. That's the cheese mixture. Now all that's left is assembling it, and then it takes a little time to cook. But the payoff is totally worth it. I think I'm just about finished grating up the mozzarella. And that, by the way, is a fourth cheese that I'm putting into this dish. But who's counting, right? Okay, now it's about assembling it, which is super fun and really easy. I'm just gonna spray the slow cooker all over the inside with some cooking spray. I'm gonna start by putting some meat sauce in the bottom of the slow cooker. I'll add about a fourth of the sauce. I've got one regular size noodle and I'm putting it right in the center. And then I snapped a couple of smaller sizes, just broke off the ends so they would fit. So I'll put a couple that are slightly shorter, overlapping the big one. And then I've got some shorter ones and those will go on the outside. There's no exact science to this, just kind of snap and break to fit the slow cooker you have. Now for the ricotta mixture. Okay, the mozzarella goes on next. The layers start all over again. Meat, noodles, cheese mix, mozzarella, and again. Meat, noodles, cheese mix, mozzarella, and this time, meat, and a final layer of mozzarella. Turn it on low for four hours, and dinner's done. Stunning slow cooker chicken verde burritos. This chicken is so tasty, and there are just two really easy steps to cooking it. So I'm gonna season the chicken, and I'm using boneless, skinless chicken thighs, a super thrifty choice. I tell you, I can't believe that chicken thighs are so much less expensive than chicken breasts, because thighs, in my opinion, are so much more delicious. And I'm just seasoning them with salt, pepper, cumin, and some paprika. Now, if you wanna get super thrifty, you can use bone-in chicken thighs with the skin on, but I really love the boneless, skinless option for these burritos because then you don't have to mess with the skin, which can cook down a lot of fat. But the flavor of chicken thighs, to me, is so much better than chicken breasts. So I added the chicken thighs to the slow cooker, and I'm going to pour over a whole jar of salsa verde. And can you believe how simple that is? So I'm gonna put the lid on the slow cooker, turn it on low, and it's gonna cook for four hours, and then we can move forward with assembling the burritos. So now it's time for stage two. I already peeked at the chicken, so I didn't have that big steam reveal I was hoping for, but sometimes I just can't keep my hands away from the food. So I'm just going in with two forks, and I'm gonna shred the chicken and just break up the big pieces. The great thing about this is you can just break it up into chunks, or you can shred to your heart's content and just wind up with a slow cooker full of shredded chicken. Ooh, and it just smells divine. So it's all about building the burritos now. And when I build a burrito, I really build a burrito. So I've got a great big flour tortilla and I blackened them over the open flame of the stove just to give them a little extra flavor. And then I have a couple of little saucepans on the stove. First, just regular long grain rice. Then I have some seasoned black beans, and obviously these are from a can. Very, very easy and quick. So after you get the rice and beans on, then it's about the chicken. And honestly, I think I've already probably filled this too full, but <laughs> I get excited about burritos like this. So after the chicken, I have all of these other delicious ingredients. Some shredded lettuce and tomato, I'm just gonna use my fingers. Grated cheddar cheese, 
You think I'm gonna be able to close this burrito? It's gonna be an adventure. And then salsa and sour cream. I'll do sour cream first. I wish uh, Mauricio and Alex were here. This is basically their favorite food on earth. Okay, the moment of truth. <laughs> I'm not the best burrito folder in the world, but basically you wanna bring up the sides, <laughs> fold over away from you, and then bring it to the middle of the plate. Boop. I wasn't concerned at all. Look at that. It doesn't look like much just sitting there on the plate like that, so I always like to slice it open and look at the glory inside. Look at that. Oh, so much goodness. And I can't help but make things a little bit prettier, so I'm gonna sprinkle on some lettuce and tomato on the plate, a little bit of cheese on top. Oh, and I'll do a little bit more salsa on top. Why not? And how about a little more sour cream? <laughs> Once you start garnishing a plate, there's no end in sight. Oh, wow. Slow cooker, chicken verde burritos, so easy to make and such a big, delicious payoff. This is my kind of meal right here. Out here in the country, I always have to stock up on groceries, but I overstocked a little bit with the chicken. It happens sometimes. I diced up these chicken thighs and I'm gonna turn them into slow cooker chicken and broccoli. It's gonna make a super tasty lunch for my hungry family. I sprinkled on some salt and pepper and now I'm just sprinkling on a little bit of five spice powder. It's kind of an unusual spice to use for chicken. I'm only using a little bit. It's got a mix of cinnamon, cloves, star anise. It just gives a really nice flavor. It's a little bit different. And I'll put the thighs right into the slow cooker. I have some liquid to add to the slow cooker. A couple cups of low sodium chicken broth. You can use veggie broth. Sometimes I overstock on broth too, so I use whatever kind I need to get rid of. Some sriracha. Gotta squeeze in a couple tablespoons at least. I love the heat, but I also love the flavor. So good. And then soy sauce, about a half a cup. And then finally some fresh ginger and garlic. Now I'll give this a stir. Okay, now the lid goes on, and I'm gonna turn the slow cooker to high for three and a half hours, and then I'll do a few more things right at the end. The slow cooker chicken and broccoli has been going for three and a half hours. I've got a couple more things to do to it, and then we'll all have lunch. I've just been stirring together some cornstarch and water, making a little mess along the way. This is a slurry, and it's gonna help thicken the sauce in the slow cooker. So I'll pour it in. I love the flavor of sesame oil, so I'm gonna add just a little bit. I have some broccoli florets, and I'll drop those in, along with some red bell pepper. I just seeded it, diced it, and chopped it. I wait until near the end to add the veggies, because I don't want them to fall apart and be too soft. I'll stir them in. Now this just needs to go for another 30 minutes. So everyone gets a big pile of rice, then the chicken and broccoli goes right on top with a scattering of sliced onions and a sprinkling of sesame seeds. This is probably gonna be my favorite thing tonight. It's inspired by my mom's cheese fondue that she would make for parties in the late 70s. Oh, I miss those days. I smashed a clove of garlic and now I'm gonna coat the cheese. I've got a mixture of Swiss and Gruyere, which I think when it comes to fondue, is the perfect combination of cheeses. Now I've got some white wine that's simmering in a little slow cooker. And I'm gonna drop the garlic in there so it can start infusing the wine. Now I'm gonna coat the cheeses with a little cornstarch. That keeps them from separating and making the fondue greasy when it all melts. Gruyere especially is sort of a greasy, oily cheese in a good way. <laughs> but sometimes when it melts, it can separate. So the cornstarch helps that a lot. And then for flavor, I'm adding half a teaspoon of ground nutmeg. The fondue does not taste like nutmeg. 
it's not like a Christmas dessert or anything. It just adds a little bit of interest to the cheese. You'll hardly know it's there, but you would miss it if it wasn't. Now the cheese is plenty salty, so I'm just gonna add a pinch and then about a half a teaspoon of black pepper. And I'll toss this around. Okay, now all of this cheese goes into the slow cooker. Now I'll stir it just to get the process started. All right, now I'm gonna cook this at 30 minutes on high, and then I'll decrease the heat to low and cook it for another 45 minutes, stirring it occasionally. For the fondue, I'll give it a final stir. Oh my goodness, words fail me. Well, almost. Just look at that cheese, oh gosh. I'll put the lid back on to keep it warm and set out crudités and sticks to dip in the fondue. I'm making a slow cooker sweet potato version. It's really gonna elevate the flavors. I've just been cutting up some peeled sweet potatoes into big chunks and I'm gonna coat them in cornstarch. I'm cooking these in the slow cooker in a little bit of a liquid and the cornstarch will help the sweet potato sauce really thicken as they cook. Adding about a tablespoon and a half of cornstarch and I'm gonna toss the potatoes in the cornstarch until they're all coated. Okay, those are all tossed. So I'm gonna pour these right in. Now I'll add four tablespoons of butter and kind of scatter it around. This is such an easy way to make sweet potatoes. I'm gonna add a cup of brown sugar, a teaspoon of pumpkin pie spice, and you know me, <laughs> I've gotta add a little cayenne pepper. And then a splash of vanilla. And then I squeeze the juice out of an orange. Oh, the combination of flavors is amazing. And then just a little bit of water, about a quarter cup, and that just helps the sauce become a little more saucy. <laughs> Some salt. Okay, now the lid goes on. And I'm gonna cook this for three hours on low, and I'll stir it from time to time. Can't believe it, my work here is done. To serve up, I took a pretty platter, tipped out the sweet potatoes, sprinkled over chopped toasted walnuts, and chopped parsley. Bolognese sauce is hearty and meaty and rich and wonderful, and it's a great thing to make in a slow cooker. However, the whole thing starts in a great big skillet. I just heated it up and added some olive oil, and I'm gonna add a whole bunch of veggies because I'm making a huge batch of bolognese sauce. Okay, I've got onions, carrots, and celery. And stir these around. The next ingredient to add is garlic. I started with six cloves and I'm getting it as fine as I can. I'm putting it in now so it doesn't burn. If I put it in with those onions and carrots and celery, it would have gotten a little bit burned. Okay, I'll stir it in and let the flavors start to go. That smells wonderful. So I'm gonna add a can of tomato paste for that rich, rich tomato flavor. Now it's really hot, so I'm gonna grab the hard stuff, red wine. I'll add a cup. Okay, this looks great. Now I'm just gonna let the wine cook and it'll take about three minutes. The veggies and the tomato paste and the wine is delicious. It is really cooking away. I'm just gonna season it all with some salt and pepper. Give it one final stir. This is cooked as much as I want to cook it. So I'm going to go ahead and put it into the slow cooker. Oh, it smells so good. I'm going to put a little more olive oil in the pan because now it's all about the beef. I've got four pounds of ground beef and it goes right in. You can do a combination of beef and sausage if you want. You can just do plain ground pork, ground turkey, just whatever kind of meat you want. Bolognese is very forgiving. And I need to season it too. So salt and pepper, very simple. And then I need to stir and cook the meat completely. It's gonna take about 15 minutes. 
The beef is all brown, so I'm gonna add probably the weirdest ingredient for the bolognese, two cups of whole milk. This is sort of a traditional thing they do in Italy. I think it's a little bit unusual, but I'm gonna trust the process and add it. The idea is just to add that nice fattiness and also to balance the acidity of the tomatoes. So that is it for the skillet. I'm gonna get the meat mixture into the slow cooker now. Well, that was my workout for the day. <laughs> okay, next I'll go in with two big cans of crushed tomatoes. And then I've got some herbs to add. Dried basil flakes, some nutmeg, oregano, and thyme, some crushed red pepper flakes. Okay, and I love to add Parmesan rind. Don't ever throw these away. They're so good to add to sauces. Now I will stir it. There is so much good stuff in here. Okay, that looks great. So now the lid goes on, and then I'll set it on low. It'll cook for six hours, and it'll be all done. When the sauce has cooled, I pack up the rest for the freezer. I'm making a slow cooker white chicken chili. It's all the good things about chili, but with white beans and chicken, and boy, is it phenomenal. Put a bunch of chicken breasts in there, and now I'll whip up a spice mix. Let's start with cumin, coriander, which is really tasty, paprika, some crushed red pepper flakes, some oregano, and then salt. And instead of black pepper, I'm gonna use white pepper since it's white chicken chili. I'm gonna keep things pure and holy. I'm just gonna sprinkle a spice mix right over the chicken. And now I've got a bunch of good veggies to add. I diced up a bunch of onion. I mean, this is a pile, but this makes a big batch of chili. Okay, I've also got garlic. Can't have chili without a pile of garlic. And for heat, I sliced up some fresh jalapenos. I didn't even seed them. <laughs> this is such a big batch that it won't be too overpowering. And then I've got four stalks of celery. Okay, just a little more chopping. That is a lot of celery too. <laughs> a lot of onions, a lot of celery, a lot of flavor. Okay, I've got a couple of green bell peppers. I'm just gonna chop them up, reach in and pull out the seeds. I'm gonna keep the peppers in pretty big chunks. White chicken chili is so good. It's really basically like chicken and bean soup, but when you add all these chili seasonings, it pretty much turns into chili. Okay, now in addition to the green peppers, I like to add roasted green chilies that are chopped. I don't even drain them, I just pour them right in. So in go the beans. These are great northern white beans and I soaked them overnight and then gave them a good rinse. And finally, the liquid. Low sodium chicken broth. White chicken chili is so good because you can dress it up and make it elegant. Serve it with some really nice cornbread sticks or you can dress it down. Just throw it into a mug and eat it in front of the TV. Lid goes on. Now I've got a few more things I've got to do to the chili later. I'll fill you in on that while I run to town. I'll put it on eight hours on low. Just as I promised, I want to tell you how I finish off the chili. So 30 minutes before the cooking time's up, I'll add a mix of milk and masa to thicken the chili. Then throw in frozen sweet corn, stir it, and give it another 30 minutes. When the cooking time's up, there are just a few more steps before serving. I'll take the chicken out, shred it, and get the chicken back in. I'll add some lime juice, Monterey Jack cheese, and stir it together. So now it's time to serve up the chili. Get ready, it's gonna be delicious. Everybody gets a big bowl full of the good stuff with a dollop of sour cream, extra cheese, of course, chopped cilantro, 
and some rolled up warmed corn tortillas on the side. 